In this tutorial, we'll look at the at rigging the telescopic action you see here. We will start with four beams, as you see here, beam one, one, two, three, four, a base dummy object and an end dummy object. Let's position these things as we'd like. So we'll look here snap to the grid point. We're going to take our beam number one and move it to the origin to zero zero. Beam number two snapping to the grid will move this to a location about 10 out. Let's go to wireframe so we can see this more easily. We'll take the third beam and position it about there and the fourth beam will position it excuse me the fourth beam will position it approximately there and then the end dummy object we will position at the very end like this. So there you, you can see here some staggering of the uh, four beams, the end dummy and the beginning dummy. One of the first things we'd like to do is link each of these components to the base dummy. This will allow us to position the entire telescope telescoping uh, configuration anywhere in space. So we want to take each object and link it to the base dummy. And finally the end object, we're going to link that to the base dummy as well. So if we rotate or move the base dummy, everything goes along with it. Good thing I checked because I missed this piece, so let's link this beam here with the base dummy as well. Let's rotate that again and see that I got everything. We'll grab the dumb, the base one and yes, everything is linked. Great. As you can see over here in the Explorer, all the objects are linked to dummy base. Okay. Now what we'd like to do is be able to take this end dummy and move it and have the object telescope out. So let's put that back there. What we're going to do is take our beam number four, the smallest beam, Go over here to our position uh, on the uh, on this tab and change that to a float expression. And what we'd like to do is have this beam number four, the smallest beam, move along with the end dummy. So what I'm going to do is define a new variable here called D end for dummy end, and I'm going to create that and assign it to the end dummy. So let's come down here and there it is dummy end and we'll expand that position and I'm going to double click the X position. So dummy end is the dummy end object position controller for the X direction and we'll just change it up here to D E N D. Capitalization is important so it's capital D capital E lowercase n D. And if we evaluate that, we see that the beam number four moves such that its origin is now at the origin of the dummy. We'd really like that position to the left. I forgot to mention that each one of these beams is 150 units long. So let's subtract from this 150 and then evaluate it again. All right, so now if we take this dummy and move it out and in and back, you can see I have control of beam number four. Um, I could take it and move this anywhere. You can see it's only affecting the X position. One other thing I might do is go over here to my hierarchy tab and lock Y and Z so that when I grab this and move it around, I'm only really seeing the dummy move in the X direction. All right. I'd like to add one more very important note. When working with expression controllers, it's very important to have the system units and the display units be the same. So in this case, I am working with a display unit of inches and a system unit of inches. Make sure these two are the same, otherwise the numbers you use in your expression controllers will be incorrect. The next thing we'd like to do is when this thing gets out to a certain point, we'd like beam number two, excuse me, beam number three, to go along with it. So when I move this out to a certain place, I want to move I want to bring that beam number 3 along with it. Let's change this to a wireframe 
representation. And let's say that when this gets out to about, let's say about here, which is about 12 units, we're looking at a 10 unit grid here, so this is about 12 units, we want to pull that along with us. So what is the position of that object, what is the position of beam 4 when that is about 12 units from its end? We look down here and it's approximately 156 units. So what we're going to do is create a expression controller for beam number 3. So we'll select beam number 3 and what I'd like to do is beam number 3 we're going to write or create a float expression for that and it currently starts off at position 20. What we'd like to do is really create an if statement that says if we are greater than what did we say? 156. So if the if beam number 4 is greater than 156, what we'd like to do if that's true, we would like to position the beam at the location of beam number 4, whatever its x position is, minus 150, which is the length of it of beam number four, but we'd also like to add 12 to that, plus 12. We could do the math out and put 100 minus 138 instead, but it, you can see here how m my thinking. We're going to position it at the location of beam four, minus 150, and then move it another 12. That's what we want to do if the beam four is greater than 156. If it's less than 156, we want to keep it where it is, which is at 20. So let's evaluate that. So we'll hit the evaluate button and I get a little error message that it doesn't know what beam number four is. We haven't defined that variable. So let's go beam number four and I'm going to create a variable for that and I'm going to assign it to the x position of beam number four. All right, so let's try evaluating it now. So now I can take my end dummy and I can move it in and out and if I go out too far you can see it starts bringing that beam number three along with it so when it gets approximately to here 12 units from its end it brings that along with it so the same logic we'd like to handle the next beam which is beam number two so I'm going to swipe this for now and come over here to beam number two and we're going to create a position expression controller for that. So let's come down here, float expression, and I'm going to paste in my other equation. And instead of 156, we'd like a different value. Well, what value would we like? Let's kind of screw, zoom out here. And I'm going to take this and come out. So again, when this is about 12, right about there, the location of beam number four, I'm seeing to be about 286. So this expression is here when it's beam 4 is greater than 280, 286. I want to have an expression of beam 4. Instead of minus 150, the length of one beam, I really want to make that 300, the length of two beams. Each of those beams have an overlap of 12, so I'm going to change this 12 to 24. And the position at, before it starts sliding out, instead of being 20, is really 10. They're staggered. So let's evaluate that. Again, I forgot to define uh, beam number 4. So let's do that. Create it. Assign to controller. And uh, beam number 4. Okay, let's try that again. We'll evaluate it. And now I can take this. And I can move it in. And I can move it out and I've got my telescoping action. All right, so that works pretty well. One more thing I'd like to do is, you can see I can take this end dummy and I can push it all the way to the left and my fourth beam actually moves out, let's go to shading, moves out beyond it to the left and I can pull it out so far I can disassemble the, unassemble the whole thing. So what I'd like to do is really put another constraint on this to change this value so that the beam number four doesn't uh, allow 
doesn't really disconnect from the entire mechanism. So let's go back to beam number four and look at its expression. And what I want to do is really say if, we're going to start off with an if statement. We're writing in our, 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 our expression. So if the end dummy is less than, excuse me, less than some value. Well, what value? If, if this moves l approximately just about there, if it's less than, and I'm looking down here at my x value, if it's less than 180, I don't want it to go any further. So if the dummy end is less than 180, what I want to do is keep it at its position, which is a position of 30. Otherwise, use the expression we developed earlier, dn minus 150. So let's try that, and let's evaluate that. Now, I get a message. Evaluate, again, d-e-n-d -E is where the problem is. Notice that it's capital D, lowercase e, and my variable is capital D, capital E. So I should really come over here and change that to a capital E. You've got to be careful with this. Let's do an evaluation of that. So I'm going to grab this again, and this time I'm going to go back to the left and notice that that innermost beam doesn't go any further to the left than that extreme position, which is 180. We'd like to do something similar at the other end. So we're going to look at this, and let's go to back to my wireframe representation and move it so that this is this is probably the maximum position we want to have there. Looking down at the bottom of the screen, I see a value of 564. So we want to change this expression to be if the D, capital E and D, is greater than 564, what we'd like to do is have that at a position of, of 564, we're going to position it at 564 if that's true, minus the length of the beam which is 150. So that's a true condition. The false condition is what we've already written and we need one more parenthesis to close that outer expression off. So let's evaluate that. So now what we should be able to do, I'll turn off the grid here and uh, We'll grab this and we'll move it to the left. They stack up nicely and we'll move it to the right and it, the, the dummy goes on beyond it but we do not extend the telescope any more than necessary than it should physically do. So let's rotate that around to another orientation and we can take this and we can drag this in and out. Let's do the move. Take this dummy and compress and the telescoping action. Since it's all relative to this base dummy, I can move this anywhere I want in space and I can rotate it to any angle and it still behaves correctly. So I'll come back here and we'll do a move and I'm going to take that move and I'm going to you can see it extends and works correctly. Alright, so that really completes uh, this tutorial. Thank you.